We're gonna react to a video from Sunny V2. Welcome to Spicy Reacts. Disclaimer: This is not my video. I did not create it. The original will be down in the links below. The video is titled "How Steven Seagal Became Hollywood's Worst Celebrity." He killed a family's one-year-old puppy dog and no. stole money from a kid in a wheelchair. Steven no. Seagal has such a comically terrible history. He now simply refuses to face it. I wonder how you deal with all that. Oh, he pissed. Hello, Steven Seagal. Number one, treating other actors terribly during filming. I have a family member that worked with him years ago on a low-budget film. Steven Seagal was miserable and rude, but it only gets worse from here. Whilst filming for the movie Exit Wounds, stuntman Steven Quadros explained that Seagal would unexpectedly kick guys in the nuts to see if they were wearing cups, which was also mentioned what? by a different stuntman in a completely unrelated interview. The first thing he's gonna do is kick you in the nuts. He's like, oh, hey, what are you wearing a cup? Pop. He's just gonna pop you in the nuts. That's the first thing he does. One comment stated, that I actually know weird. a few stuntmen and actors who've worked with Seagal, and they all echo the same thing about him, one of whom might have been Stephen Lambert, who stated Seagal became more unpredictable during his fight scenes. He's notorious of breaking people's arms, legs, ribs. As he'd actually punch and hit other actors to make the fights look real. He was actually hitting the stuntmen like oh, for real? Oh, hell yeah. He's known for that. To make matters worse, protective equipment wasn't allowed on set. This there's nothing wrong with putting on pads. They would say no, because he wouldn't allow it. And it's therefore no surprise that during one scene, Seagal injured DMX's shoulder during the fight, so X had to take a few days off. Even worse was when That's Seagal insane. put a stuntman in hospital. And he beat the shit out of the guy and smashed his face to the mirror multiple times. He went over the top to the point that sent the guy to the hospital. Which isn't surprising given he was this rough while filming a YouTube video. Oh! Whoa. Right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't ready. Really. <laughs> As a result, actors have to Jesus. be extremely careful just to appear alongside him. You gotta keep a third eye on what he's doing. And if you're not good enough, he's gonna hurt you. Although not only because of unexpected injuries. Sagar would show up on set demanding insane movie changes. Because the director is like, we're changing the scene. We're gonna do the scene in Arabic. He's gonna teach me. And he's like, put this camera here, put this camera here. And I was like, everybody's like, what? While Steven Tobolowski told a funny story. Story, where Seagal He's the actor, stopped not a director. What the hell? Who is this man think he is? Crisis. What, what job, Stephen it? Seagal has had a spiritual awakening. He decided that he doesn't want to kill people anymore in movies. And Stephen says, I think it's just bad that we keep putting this violence into the world. This resulted in a $14 million lawsuit claiming that Seagal not only regularly showed up late and left early, but also made regular unauthorized changes to the script and dialogue, which could result in the loss of millions of dollars because parts of the film's plot that were promised now cannot be delivered to the film by. Seagal was sued for another 60 million after repeating his Jesus. actions on four other sets, justifying his lack of effort with the worst excuse you'll ever hear. Seagal backed out because his Buddhist guru known as Mukara said the films would create bad karma, perhaps because Seagal's also been exposed for exaggerating his skills as a fighter. Steven Seagal is in fact a black belt martial artist, however his martial art of choice Aikido has been heavily criticized for being one of those mostly impractical martial arts that has extremely limited application in real life scenarios. He is a legitimate Aikido black belt, but the martial art is the questionable thing. A Reddit comment describes Seagal's martial art to be a kind of a cult with fake telegraphed attacks. The attackers are just there to make the master look good, which is exactly what's shown in this video, where Seagal's attackers just fall to the floor to make him look good for the crowd. Unfortunately, people don't voluntarily flip over what? in the real world. This makes pro wrestling look real, wonderfully choreographed. Fighting is always easier when your opponent cooperates. It's therefore no surprise Seagal <laughs> has no professional fighting record. Who never made does a keto? So and so coming in the cage isn't a world champion with a background in Makito. You never heard that once. Have you ever heard that once? for a reason. But he did claim that he'd taught Anderson Silva how to do a highly specialized move, the leg kick. I started teaching him kicks that I thought he could really hurt people with and uh, at that point I knew he was going to start to really make these kicks, you know, 
work. He created the front kick. Did he invent the wheel too? In response, <laughs> Anderson Silva made a video mocking Steven Seagal's fighting, although there was one more attempt by Seagal to prove he could actually fight. Whilst on set for the movie Out the Justice, Seagal claimed that due to his Aikido training, he couldn't possibly be choked unconscious. The challenge was taken up by martial artist Jean LaBelle, who not only choked Seagal out instantly, but also caused Seagal to soil himself in the moments he was blacking out. When asked about the incident, LaBelle stated, sometimes Steven has a tendency to cheese off the wrong people, and you can get hurt by doing that. So if right. a guy soils himself, you can't criticize him, because if they just had a nice big dinner an hour before, you might have a tendency to do that. Seagal responded by claiming that he and LaBelle had never even fought. There was never ever in any confrontation with him, ever. And if Gene is saying shit like that, he should be ashamed of himself. And so if he said that, he is a Get in the ring and sort it out, mate, like man. scumbag liar. Although nobody believes Seagal's side of the story, as he has his own list of well-documented lies. For example, Seagal made the insane claim that he was honored as the first private citizen to destroy a nuclear device, whilst also claiming he was recruited by the CIA to help carry out undercover missions. He'd explained, you could say that I became an advisor to several CIA agents in the field, and through my friends in the CIA met many powerful people and did special works and special favors, although an investigation by a magazine found these claims were completely bogus. It also dispelled the myth that Seagal once fought the Yakuza in his dojo, as the magazine interviewed Seagal's ex-wife who stated it's a lie. He once chased a few drunks away from the dojo, but never was involved with the Yakuza. Similarly, Seagal made the claim that he was a tough kid who was feared by others, yet this was dispelled by his own mother who stated her son was frail and suffered from asthma. He was a puny kid back then, although Seagal had a plan to clarify exactly what was fact and fiction. He'd post a Reddit Ask Me Anything mm. likely expecting normal questions, however the responses the would only deepen the past that was already haunting him. What kind of pants were you wearing when Jean LaBelle choked you unconscious and caused you to shit your pants? I personally know I, a stuntman who had all of his front teeth knocked out by you and said you didn't even apologize. Why did you do that? Can you explain how you developed the front kick? that Anderson Silva used in his UFC fight, although there was one more question that was worse than any other. Hey there, I went to the same junior high school as you in Fullerton CA many years later. Heard some stories. The one I would like to ask you about is when your social studies teacher caught you stealing lunch money from a kid in a wheelchair. True, I didn't make this up. Seagal understandably avoided the damning questions. However, by answering some of the easy ones, he'd introduce another flaw. His massive ego. What is your current biggest drive that motivates you. I am a champion and I want to remain a champion. Seagal's overinflated self-image was better shown in mate. this interview it. where he'd imply that Van Damme wasn't a good martial artist. I think that that's a matter of opinion that he was a champion anywhere. Yeah. Which was then proven at a party when the two came head to head. The party was hosted by Sylvester Stallone who stated, Van Damme was tired of Seagal saying he could kick his ass and went right up to him and offered him the chance to step outside so he could wipe the floor with him. Seagal made some excuse and left. Van Damme, who was completely berserk, tracked him down and again offered him a fight, and again Seagal pulled a Houdini, yet Seagal unsurprisingly stated it was Van Damme who ran from him. Is that true he got in a fight with you? No, it'd be like me squashing an ant. If he sees me, he runs. It's therefore no surprise that Seagal oh despises God, Van Damme. Thoughts on Jean-Claude Van Damme? Can I laugh in your face? Do I think Jean-Claude's a tough guy or martial artist? No. However, Van Damme has only ever said positive things about Seagal in return. Met the guy a few times. He's a nice guy. Doesn't like me much. I, I like him a lot. Good yeah, guy. good well, charisma, he's got something special on the screen. Another example of Steven Seagal's ego came from a story told by Rob Schneider. Finally, Steven Seagal emerges and he comes out and he said, I just read the greatest script I've ever read in my life. <laughs> he goes, really? Who wrote it? I did. <laughs> <laughs> Which only becomes funnier once you realize that said best script ever was for his terrible performance on Saturday Night Live. Listen to me carefully. I don't want you to talk about about anything to me anymore. I don't want you to say my name anymore. With atrocious lines such as that one, it's no surprise a long-term SNL employee called Seagal worse host by lapped 
every bad host. However, Seagal's hosting of another show somehow ended even worse. In 2009, Seagal told the LA Times he'd apparently been a policeman for more than 20 years, proving this by showing a black and white photo wow. of him raising his Jesus right Christ. hand in what looks like a swearing-in ceremony, creating the impression it was taken when he That's first the joined the it. apartment. At closer inspection, however, it appears the photo was taken 20 years and at least 20 pounds after the fact, casting doubt on whether Seagal had ever been part of the force. Regardless, this led Seagal to create a show called Lawman, where he and his crew went around apprehending criminals, often done with excessive force to make for enjoyable viewing. Well, in one episode, Seagal attempts to break up an illegal cockfighting operation by raiding a house with a tank with the goal of freeing the animals. Animal cruelty is one of my... Uh... However, after doing so, the property's owner, Jesus Sanchez Uvira, quickly filed a $100,000 lawsuit which claims that more than 100 prized chickens being bred for show were killed by Seagal and his colleagues. An 11-month-old oh, no. puppy was also shot and killed during the early oh, morning hell, raid. No. Seagal responded by stating, I've been called a lot of things in my career, some of them not so kind. But to be labelled an animal abuser is beyond the pale and that is simply a role I will not accept. While another policeman stated, if my death deputies, or Possum and Seagal for that matter, had done something so awful like shooting a family dog, then where are the photos to prove it? It seemed for the first time ever Seagal wasn't actually lying, however oh, there was okay. one more lawsuit that would end the show completely. In mid-2010, Steven Seagal was sued for sex trafficking, which became one of so many different allegations, it's What's genuinely these difficult fucking guys to in count sex trafficking, man. On the set of 1991 Out for Justice, four different women quit during filming due to Seagal's continued piggery while one of the stuntmen from earlier told an Jesus equally crazy story. There's this girl sitting in a, in a tub. She's wearing a bikini and they had to convince her that she has to come out of the tub naked. The only thing that might rival his terrible track record with women is his track record with low-rated movies, none of which receiving more than 50% on Rotten Tomatoes or more than 5 out of 10 on IMDb. And with no new movies in the last five years, Seagal has opted for a modern method of generating extra income crypto scams. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, Steven Seagal scammed people with crypto. From Team Seagal, Steven has just become the worldwide ambassador for the Bitcoin second generation cryptocurrency. Despite gaining only 150 likes, Steven was promised 250,000 in cash and 750,000 worth of B2G tokens in exchange for his promotions, which he failed to disclose to the public, resulting in a $330,000 fine. Seagal paid only $75,000 toward his debt before refusing to appear in court, then moving to Russia where he still lives now. Like Jesus man, these sex traffickers. It's insane. Anyway, that was a good video by Sunny V2.